I'm Annie Whitehead. I'm a jazz trombone player, composer, arranger and workshop leader. I've, I ran and arranged for the World Music Workshop in London for 50 years, playing music from jazz to Africa and Cuban to reggae. We met every Monday and did concerts and um, at the Vortex mainly. And people in that band range from about um, 18 years old to 80 and they were all abilities and um, so it was it was great fun and it had very much of an improvisational nature as well as um, you know working together playing together section work and some reading um, I've done workshops in all settings working with children as young as 11 to as I said before 80 year olds um, including working on projects with refugees as a composer and arranger as well as recently with young composers uh, for Composite and the Firebird Trust. That's as a, as a mentor, so working on their ideas and along with the band, bringing their ideas to fruition and recording them. Um, I've worked with all kinds of musicians, classical musicians and folk musicians on, on improvisation, really, just to encourage people to start improvising and feel comfortable and um, with, with everything that I do, there's an element of, of improvisation. Um, I'm currently based in Kent, having lived in London for many years, and I'm originally from Oldham in Lancashire. And that's where I started playing. Um, I'm, I started playing in brass bands when I was 13, 14. And uh, there was, uh, you know, my best friend also played in the band. And there was another woman trom girl, girl trombone player. And, um, you know, there was never any... Um, problem um, with with being a girl in that world um, for me there wasn't and also from the people who taught me and the other people you know we were all just playing music and having a great time basically you know traveling going to um, competitions and and just playing together and enjoying making music and then I was when I was 16 I joined Ivy Benson's band and um, I'd heard about the band and I wrote to her um, asking for a job and she wrote back uh, offering me an, uh, an interview and so I went she was playing in Oldham funnily enough <laughs> um, a couple of you know a couple of months after she got my letter so I along with my whole extended family about 25 or 30 of us descended on Platt's working men's club working man's club that night in Oldham uh, to listen to the band and for me to have um, an audition with Ivy uh, I, I didn't get the job right away but just, she wrote to me just um, a month or so later and offered me a summer season in in um, Torquay. So at 16 I left home and I was working as a professional musician. Uh, there was a lot of reading, um, no improvisation. I didn't know how to improvise yet. And um, it was great. I mean, it was really hard work every night, working every night, all different styles of music. And actually by that time I had 
um, figured out that the trombone could pretty much play everything, which is why I was so interested in it and why I wanted to keep up at it, because I saw trombone players playing in brass bands, in classical music, um, you, jazz on you know, on the TV. I remember seeing Chris Barber's band and um, and also, you know, I'd, I'd heard um, Motown and pop music and, you know, the horn sections in those, especially like Aretha Franklin and stuff like that, horn sections, you know, I just thought, wow, that's, you know, it sounded incredible to me. Um, it's like great trombones in um, Don't Play That Song For Me. Uh, and also I had a Quincy Jones record, so there's big band stuff and Count Basie. I'd been playing since I was 14 um, with a with a big band in Manchester called the uh, big the big city sound, um, and yeah, I you know I just thought this is this is great this instrument you know because it's so diverse I can play any kind of music. Um, so when I left Ivy, I started listening to funk and jazz more, and then I started you know kind of pretty much teaching myself how to play jazz you know by learning scales and um, learning people's solos and learning tunes at that time the people who influenced me were um, Mingus, Carla Bley, um, especially Roswell Rudd the great trombone player, um, JJ Johnson, Miles Davis, I love Charles Mingus as well because of Jimmy Nepper and um, I, you know, my idea of uh, jazz was was quite modern, you know, and it started freeing out. Um, and, you know, I realized that um, the music was about communication and and it had all of the music that I was listening to at the time. What I was interested in was the emotional, the emotional aspect of the music and the effect that it had on me. And um, so listening to Carla's band and Mingus and yeah, as I said, Miles Davis, all of those people, oh, it was just such a kind of profound emotion. And I thought, I, I want to make music like that. Um, I just, I really want to have that effect. Not, not that exact effect on people, but I wanted to reach people and I wanted to touch people. And um, then shortly after that, I started listening to the Brotherhood of Breath, and and more African music and um, again the kind of joy in the music I just thought it lifted my spirit so much I thought that I really wanted to to work in this way me when I listened to bands like Carla Bley and Mingus were the colours um, that were used and also the the personalities of the different players and so yeah I just kind of thought yeah it's not it's not about just having a trumpet player in a band and a trombone player in the band just to kind of make that sound it's actually about how those people play so again that's what really affected me at that time it wasn't the instrument it was the musician and so again I it led me to to more interest in in um, expressing myself 
as a player. Um, it's always difficult as a player to, um, you know, to to concentrate on expressing yourself because you know there's like lots and lots of technical aspects and also to gain kudos you know in the world of professional musicians then you know you need to be you need to get your stuff together you know you need to get um, a good technique and and I did that I got you know I did lots of practice and a good technique but I was never a purely technical player and maybe there aren't any purely technical players but it was really the it was the means to the end at the same time, it was important to me to be good technically, because as a woman, you know, I always felt that if I wasn't, then I could be called out on that or people could say, well, women can't just can't play as well as men. So it really was important for me to to do that work on my technique, um, to be able to express myself through the instrument but also to guard myself against people saying, Oof, she's not very good as, you know, as, as a woman player. Um, and that's been something as well that's also, also kind of interested me in improvisational music. Um, I think especially in Europe, um, but all over the world actually, people, you know, people in that realm are much more interested in the expression rather than you know what you can do um, is how you can express so I always thought that the kind of free improvisational movement was was very very much more open to mus women musicians because there was a, an emphasis on and respect um, really for how you know for the the personal in music for what people actually brought um, I saw a brilliant thing the other day somebody um, it was a retort and I decided to use use it myself. But somebody said, um, you know, I've, I've lots of times people have said to me, um, the trombone's really not a woman's instrument, is it? And actually it is when I play it. <laughs> and uh, I just thought, I heard that in another context, you know, but I thought, yeah, I'm going to use that because, you know, it's not about, you know, technicalities, you know, and, you know, it's, you don't have to be kind of big and stuff to play the trombone, but I really like that anyway. <laughs> Eighties and nineties, and living in London, um, it was a really great time for me. It was a re really great time to be in London. Uh, there was an explosion of world music there, um, and um, yeah, it was just like concerts on all over the place, and bands starting up playing world music as well. I played with uh, Dave Butelli's Onward International Orchestra, and we were playing pieces of music from Cuba and yeah, Africa, all over the world, and that was quite a new thing at the time. Jumbo, um, I can't remember his record label, but he was he was really great inspiration at that time, and um, I knew him, and he'd bring records over. So that was the first time I heard Jonas Guangua, the South African trombone player, and. Um, I'm going to send some tracks of his, so hopefully you'll hear them on the program as well. And um, I was playing with the South African scene in London as well with uh, Pinisa Saul, fantastic singer, and Dudu Pukwana. And I was also playing with Dudu um, uh, with John Stevens. And again, that was like a totally free uh, improvisation. It started off, at, we had a quartet, me, Dudu, Harry Beckett, and... Um, no, Quintet and um, John Stevens and Nick Stevens. 
and then John wrote some music for it as well. But like John's stuff, it was just, it was always like very very loose, and there was lots and lots of improvisation. Um, I, but you know, I find myself thrown in as deep end with that. John asked me to do a gig uh, with him and Dudu and Nick Stevens, and I turned up at the at the pub. It was his local pub in in um, uh, in West London, and. We just, you know, I, I was expecting some music or some direction or something. And no, we started and 50 minutes later we stopped and then we had a break and then we started again and 50 minutes later we stopped. And it was all about listening, responding to each other and, you know, playing, playing by ourselves, playing with others. It was just, it was the most wonderful experience, though totally terrifying. Um, but anyway, I just, I just, I just got on and did it. So I ended up playing with John Stevens for for a long time again, up until his death, and um, and with Dudu. And at the time as well, the um, Brotherhood of Breath uh, started up again in London. Um, for, they had a Chris had a, a time in London in the seventies. Then he moved to France, and then in the mid eighties, or well, early eighties actually, about eighty two, eighty three, uh, he started up the. Uh, the band that he was to carry on um, playing with until until he died in London. So I joined that band and um, actually went to Mozambique with Chris as well. Um, and yeah, that, I mean that was just like such a such a great thing because I'd I'd been listening to them in Jersey and uh, thought wow what a what a wonderful band. So that was a fantastic thing to to be playing with with Chris's band. And um, again, you know, hopefully, you know, a track will be played of, of Chris's band. Um, at the time as well, there was the uh, the guest stars, uh, Frank Chickens. Um, there was like so many women coming up, running bands, playing their own material. Again, there was like another explosion there. Julia Doyle, Sylvia Hallett. Uh, it's really, really so many women playing around and it was such a great time, you know, for, for women musicians and for women to start writing. And I think at that time people had just stopped really kind of judging themselves by this male standard. You know, it was like, no, this is this is how I play. This is what I want to say. This is what I want to play. And, um, you know, that's just how it is. And so it was a really, really good time for that. And there was so incredibly strong women, as I said, the guest stars and Deirdre Cartwright and, and Alison Rayner, you know, they've run a club and a gig and kept bands together again since that time. And I'm playing, I'm, you know, I'm still playing with Deirdre and Alison and um, Carol Grimes. I met Carol Grimes then and I've been playing with Carol. Um, all the way through. In fact, Carol's gig was the last gig that I did before lockdown on on March the eighth, and then it all started closing in. So um, yeah, that was a wow, what a memory, you know, to be able to kind of, to be out there playing music with other people, and it was a wonderful gig. It was a really really wonderful gig. Um, I was playing with Working Week at that time with Julie Tippett, and you know, I've I've always been inspired by singers so that's why I mentioned so many singers you know Carol, Sarah Jane, uh, Bessie Smith, Yusu Endor, Celia Cruz, Julie Tippetts you know just uh, the the trombone for me is like the nearest um, to a human voice and and that's why I love it and and it also has the kind of same range as my voice and you know I I don't sing I'm not a good singer you know so it's a playing trombones like oh yeah well I can sing through this you know and I can really as I said before express myself um yeah so that that was a really really good time loads and loads of work and as I say I we all really supported each other um and uh I I know that um women have had a hard time and still do have a hard time as well um in the music business.
my experiences as a female brass player in the music industry. Um, brass players I've found are incredibly helpful. So, you know, I've, I've toured with other brass players and we've sat day after day after day doing practice exercises, long note exercises together and scales and stuff like that and kind of helping each other stay in shape, tips, you know, I, I pretty much know that if I, you know, if I need anything, if I need to know anything or if I need any help with technique or mouthpiece or whatever, you know, I can I can ring up pretty much anybody in the in the music business in in England, you know, and, and everybody's really pleased to help each other. So that's really nice to know. And um, uh, as a as a female musician, uh, you know, a lot of it is down to self-belief and I, I think I was lucky early on, you know, having a really good teacher and, you know, also having parents and other friends around at that time who just were totally unfazed by me playing the trombone. I mean, you know, in Oldham they thought it was a bit of a laugh, but, you know, they were just unfazed about it and apart from, you know, the the headmaster and other people at school who said well you should really kind of look to you know to be doing something proper rather than playing the trombone um i didn't get very much trouble from anybody and also actually the head you know the headmaster and the people who said that to me really kind of awakened the, the rebel in me so i thought i'm going to show you you know um i, I you know i love playing music and the, and that's what i want to do um, I was lucky as well joining Ivy's band. You know, there was that opportunity there. Um, I, I didn't go to um, college. I didn't do any further education. And so I just I just kind of went out and started playing. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what's important um, to people when they're offering me paid work. Um, I know that um, I'm a good reader, so people expect me to be a good reader and um, to be able to read what's put in front of me, um, within reason, of course. <laughs> but I, I did, um, kind of name dropping here, but I did do a session for Jamiroquai and um, he, he was talking about some previous people that he'd worked with and it didn't work out. And he said to me, um, yeah, because basically you're a session musician, aren't you? And you're supposed to be able to play anything that's put in front of you, <laughs> kind of gulped and but I just kind of went yeah yeah and so um, he proceeded to kind of test that out you know and kind of was just you know actually he didn't write stuff he sang stuff and I wrote it down and you had to be pretty quick to to get it um so yeah that's important you know again I, I talked before about not being totally technically led player but it's important to have to have technique because, you know, when people book you, they want to know that you, you're going to be able to do what, what they want you to do and to carry out their ideas. And then on the improvisational level, that's about connection and being willing to connect and listen and really kind of express, express oneself. And again, be aware of the, um, of if there's any parameters, you know, to, to work within those parameters as well. Um, I work with a poet called Penny Rembo and he he kind of sends scripts because um, he's telling a poem while we're improvising and um, he wants an element of free improvisation but he doesn't want us doing you know only what we want to do while his poems being being um, spoken so you know he gives directions and it's important that those directions are respected as as well as as, as well as he wants us to be he wants us to bring ourselves to it as well so again there's that kind of fine balance but um yeah i think that's really what's expected of a musician these days you know to be to be an all-rounder you know to be able to to improvise well it is in you know in my world to be able to improvise and also be to be able to read
okay um yeah at the moment i'm we're on lockdown and i'm really really missing playing with people um i'm lucky because my partner's here and we do play together i recently played on her album which she recorded in woodstock in in america where we have another another home and um so i've been playing i've been playing quite a lot over there with people and with her and i've been i've been playing here still with carol as i mentioned earlier and with various people not running my own band at the moment um but i so miss playing with people i played on some tracks people have sent me tracks and um, i've done that i kind of done my solo and you know bit of section work and Jennifer's working on a track at the moment and I'll, I'll be playing on that too. But I so miss being on a stage with people and just playing and you know that's not just improvisation you know because if you're playing in a section you're listening all the time you're trying to blend you know you're really concentrating on that playing together pl sounding beautiful and, um, and imp improvising too you know just firing off each other you know and um, actually I've worked with Carol for a long time and that's one of my favorite collaborations because she's such a great singer and such an open-hearted um, performer and musician and uh, we have great fun playing together I, I absolutely love playing with her um, so and so what next I, I really don't know I, I I'd like to make another album um, I'm 64 now and, you know, I'm still playing. I'm loving playing. In fact, I'm loving playing more and more as I get older, um, really because of an ease in myself. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm going to be working on, I, I want to make another album. Um, I've been working with Joe Freya, who's a, a saxophone player who plays in the folk um, world. And so we're, we're planning a collaboration. And um, I'm looking forward to that because the collaboration I did with Alistair Anderson with Northern Lights was a kind of folk jazz collaboration. And I absolutely love I absolutely love the heart in folk music again and, and the kind of deep rootedness. You know, that's something that attracts me about um, African music. And, you know, I so I'm always kind of interested in our connection here to to our music you know our rooted our rooted music and um so yeah i'm looking forward to that collaboration as well and you know i just plan to keep on playing <laughs> Academy of Music for a while and um, and I gave a few lectures really at that time um, to to the people who you know to the brass players mainly about really about this idea that um, you know women can't play as as well as boys and just experience you know kind of talking about people's experiencing and asking questions and stuff like that and what I found was that a lot of the guys felt really um, not intimidated, but that, you know, they thought that women musicians got more attention than they did. And in my experience, this has been true as well. You know, I've sat on stage next to, you know, a guy playing the trombone and he'll get up and play an amazing solo. And I'm thinking, wow, that's amazing. And I'm looking at the audience and, uh, you know, people are kind of chatting and having a drink and stuff like that. And yet 
I get up and play a solo in, and it's a special event, you know, because people go, oh, look, you know, oh, look, the girl's playing the, the trombone. And um, so I've got mixed feelings about that. You know, there was a there was a, a time when I thought, you know what, I just I don't want to be a woman trombone player. I just want to be a trombone player. I want to be judged. I want to be assessed purely on, you know, what I communicate to people and um you know not on the fact that i'm i'm a woman um and you know i can't get away from that and there's no answers to that either you know i mean it's just it's just the way it is but you know i think i think more and more um things are getting more equal and i think you know more men are accept accepting women musicians and more women musicians are just going, look, this is this is what I do, this is what I play. And there's a great generation of, of young musicians coming up at the moment. And, you know, I see that they're being um, promoted, you know, by serious, um, promoted in the in the industry. And I see this and I just think good for that, because that actually did happen to me. You know, I was uh, when I made my first record. Um, I just got, you know, I got so much help from all over the place. Um, serious, um, it was serious speak out at the time. They booked tours for me. You know, I managed to find a manager. So I think, you know, if you kind of <laughs> just kind of really kind of go ahead with stuff and go, I'm going to do this, you know, I think you will find people to support you. And I, th I think as well, people are very happy to support women. And, um, you know, it's not all rosy and there's there's problems as well. But I think um, f for me, there's been enough uh, positive aspects about being a woman brass player as there has been negative. And you're always going to get those people who go, oh, women can't play as well as men and stuff like that, you know. They don't bother me now. I mean, I just think if they've got a problem, it's their problem, really. It's not mine. Mm. And um, my my problem is is expressing myself, and that's not always the easiest thing to do, you know. But it's the it's the most important thing to do.